No team in the NBA is willing to sign Marcus Cousins. Really animated here in the last few minutes. Nice dish. Wesley Matthews and then flex on Boogie. I see you. Hey, what's happening everyone? This is Swish. The Warriors need a big. Will it be DeMarcus Cousins? Absolutely not. Why? Why? Cuz f them, that's why. If that's not enough, or you feel you've been gypped, watch the entire video to find out why the Warriors, or any other team for that matter, will not sign DeMarcus Cousins. DeMarcus Boogie Cousins just rang up the Warriors general manager, Bob Myers, this past November with one thing on his mind. It's funny, like you bring up DeMarcus, he was here just for a year. DeMarcus called me a month ago and he said, uh, he said, why am I not in the NBA? And I said, you want, you want that answer? First of all, you might think, wait a second, why is he asking Bob why he's not in the NBA? What does that even mean? I mean, does Bob hold the key to every franchise? Is he a GM mind reader? Are they holding general manager meetings behind the scenes without players to discuss who they're going to be signing this year and who they're going to boycott? While the conspiracy theorist says, hey, you never know, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this question was just pretty loaded. Who would you even ask such a question? Fact is, this question wasn't so much about why Cousins isn't in the NBA as far as Boogie is concerned, as much as it is why the Golden State Warriors haven't signed him. Although there is some implication for the difficulty in him signing elsewhere, the Warriors would seemingly need DeMarcus Cousins more than anyone else. You see, ever since the Golden State Warriors moved on from center Andrew Bogut back in 2016, the team has struggled to fill the role at the 5 spot. With Bogut underperforming at the end of the year, the Warriors ended up trading him to the Dallas Mavericks along with a future second round pick for, get this, a future conditional second round pick. Makes sense. Considering Bogut's age, the fact that he just got injured and the Warriors had just drafted 7 footer Damian Jones, it was clear they were getting ready for the new era and wouldn't really benefit from keeping Bogut on the roster anyway. Small Ball just took them to the finals and though they lost, it wasn't because they were missing a 5. They had a hard time stopping the legendary Uncle Drew. The Warriors needed a guard with length and after being up 3-1 against Kyrie's Cavs, only to fall to the Ohio team 4-3. There was only one thing left to do. Seeing as the salary difference between two second round picks is moot, this Bogut trade was just so the Warriors could free up enough cap space to land Kevin Durant. With the quartet of Steph, Clay, Dre, and Durant, the Warriors knew they would be able to own the league for the foreseeable future. And own they did. You know who I am. Y'all know who I am. <laughs> Kevin Durant. 2017 and 2018 were the years of fears as the best shooters the world has ever seen coalesced onto the floor night after night behind Oracle's roars, dominating the best from the west while watching LeBron, Kai and Love tackle the least from the east only to provide fodder for the eventual massacre of the cadavers live on national TV. But that's not what you're here for. What you want to know is why no team in the league will be signing DeMarcus Cousins on a contract anytime soon. DeMarcus Cousins is a four-time NBA All-Star as well as a two-time All-NBA second team member. He was originally drafted fifth overall in the 2010 NBA draft by the Sacramento Kings. After a near fulfillment of his contract in traditional King style, unable to realize a playoff berth, Cousins was traded to the New Orleans Pelicans, a trade which netted the Kings' Buddy Heald. While with the Pelicans, Cousins tore his Achilles in January of 2018 and had to undergo season-ending surgery. With the history of Achilles tears being less than favorable for big men, things look bleak for DeMarcus as he's now left with the prospect of an early end to his career at 27 years old, while most other players his age are at their peak. At the end of the season, the Warriors had won the championship for the second year in a row and with Boogie becoming a free agent, the franchise had set their sights on the big man, or rather, Cousins set his sights on the Warriors. Cousins, not really getting any offers after his contract with New Orleans expired, called up Bob Myers. He was coming off an $11 million contract and really wasn't quite sure he would get paid considering his injury. That summer, 
The Warriors made an offer and signed Cousins on a one-year deal for $5 million using a mid-level contract, after which he spoke with Steph, KD, and Dre. Clay still doesn't know DeMarcus Cousins played for the Warriors. Someone please link Clay to this video. The NBA fandom went ballistic at this signing as this was a lineup that had five all-star players in their prime, with the exception that one was currently rehabbing, soon to be coming off injury. This contract, the first after his injury, would have a huge impact on Cousins' legacy as a basketball player. The Warriors already had enough firepower to obliterate the league, but the potential that Cousins could bring to the five at potentially the biggest discount this side of falling off the back of a truck was tantalizing and the front office did not want to miss out on all but a guaranteed three-peat. The risk was low in that Cousins could provide some locker room presence at minimum and if the Dubs were lucky, he could be healed from injury and return as one of the most talented big men in the league. Boy, were they wrong. On both counts. Here's why. Not only did Cousins not return to form, which would have been the best case scenario, but his reputation was enough to tell you he would not be the greatest locker room presence, so you don't even get the bare minimum of a positive locker room veteran. Now don't get me wrong, DeMarcus Cousins can play. He's got great post game, strength, footwork, and an outside shot. He can come off the bench and outplay any team's second string center. He proved that even after he left the Warriors when he played for the Denver Nuggets against the Warriors. Last year, Cousins averaged 9 points and 5 rebounds in 14 minutes off the bench for Denver. That's an easy 20 and 10 for full-time minutes. That is, players averaging 32 to 34 minutes a night. He can pass and defend, although admittedly his injuries have taken a bit of his pep out of his step. When he played for the Warriors in 2018 and 2019, Cousins averaged 16 points, 8 rebounds and 4 assists in 26 minutes on the floor over the span of 30 games. For the first 45 games in his lone year at Golden State, Cousins mostly sat on the bench until around December of 2018 when he went to get some 5-on-5 practice in the G League. In January of 2019, Cousins made his debut in a Warriors jersey only to re-injure himself three months later when he tore his quadriceps. To say he was disappointed would be an understatement. This was not to be the end of Cousins' run with the Warriors as he became available for Game 1 of the NBA Finals versus the Toronto Raptors. This would be the first and last finals appearance for DeMarcus Boogie Cousins when he came off the bench for the Warriors. The Golden State Warriors ended up losing the finals that year with injuries to Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson proving to be too much for the team to overcome. With the expiration of Cousins' contract, the Warriors chose not to re-sign the former All-Star. He then went on to play for the Lakers, Rockets, Clippers, Bucks, and finally Denver in that order, all on similar contractual obligations. Unfortunately for Boogie, he just couldn't find a team to call home. It's at this point Boogie calls up Bob to ask why he wasn't in the NBA. To which Bob responded, I said, you want, you want that answer? Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah. I said, because people are afraid of how you're going to act. And he's like, why? I said, well, whatever the reason is, mm -hmm. it's here now. The last part of Bob's statement is essentially saying, regardless of why teams are afraid of what you're going to do, the fact is that they're afraid and you're living in that moment right now. If you search elsewhere, you'll also see a lot of references to Boogie Cousins as a locker room cancer. He's often rejected the nickname Boogie, which tells me that there isn't a positive connotation to the nickname. But that's not necessarily what drives the locker room cancer narrative. So where did Cousins develop this reputation as a locker room cancer? This goes back to his early days in the league when he played for the Sacramento Kings. While with the Kings, Cousins gave the team much more than they bargained for. At one point during his first two years playing for the team, Boogie got sent home from the Kings home game against the New Orleans Pelicans. This is how bad things had gotten. The reason he got sent home? For butting heads with then head coach Paul Westphal as the two apparently had two completely different ideas of where the team should be headed. Cousins reportedly demanded a trade which when you think about it is probably why he signed with the Pelicans later on. They needed an enforcer type player and Anthony Glassman Davis was not going to be it. But boy, was he wrong. I mean, as a second year player in the league, fresh off a college freshman year departure, I hardly think that this was a good idea on Cousins part. Needless to say, Coach Westphal was fired four days later. Coincidence? I think not. In another instance, that same year, DeMarcus Cousins confronted the Spurs commentator about remarks that were made regarding his play against Tim Duncan. 
Sean Elliott, the commentator, criticized Cousins for his attempts to bully Tim Duncan in the post. So Cousins left the locker room and waited on the court until Elliott finished his post-game show to confront him in what was deemed a hostile manner. competitive, man. Yeah. big man battling, but some people, I want to say people are immature, want to go on TV and make comments about it. I mean, trash talking is part of the game. I got the utmost respect for Tim Duncan. Although Cousins did later apologize. But Cousins' bad boy reputation was not to be done in by some weak apology. Apparently, after the Kings did Cousins a favor and got themselves a new head coach, Keith Smart, Boogie and Smart got into an altercation which resulted in him being suspended. This altercation started during a game with the Clippers and Cousins did not return for the second half of that game. Stellar reputation being built by the Kings' future All-Star who was averaging just under 17 points and 10 rebounds a game. Now imagine if he'd just chill out and play in these second halves as well. All this and Cousins hasn't even had his 23rd birthday. That same year, Cousins led the league in texts and ejections, getting himself suspended by the league and his own team. Don't forget the Warriors have a guy named Draymond Green at this point. I know many of you can barely stomach Dre's attitude, but try this guy on for size. Pat Bev thought he could until a swift gut buster from Cousins five finger death punch rearranged Patrick Beverly's internal Demogorgons. The jury's still out on whether anyone can stomach Boogie. In his final act with the Kings, DeMarcus was suspended without pay for earning his 16th tech halfway through the season. The last two that same night for cussing out the fans and making an obscene gesture in Oracle Arena. The Kings had enough and swiftly sent him packing to the New Orleans Pelicans, who were only happy to boogie in the Dirty South. That marriage only lasted for a year as he tore his Achilles and the Pelicans dropped him so quick he almost ruptured the other one. This was his second Achilles injury for Cousins, the first of which happened three years prior but was minor and he only missed four games. That should have been an omen. However, at the end of that season, Cousins, who was on a ridiculous superstar trajectory, having dropped a 40, 20, and 10 triple-double, looking like prime Jokic before Jokic became Jokic, had not received any offers. The Warriors thought if only they could get him healthy for a run during the finals, he could contribute to the team winning their third chip and thus cementing the Warriors dynasty up there with the likes of the Celtics, Lakers, and Bulls. Unfortunately, Boogie couldn't cut it. He suffered a torn quad to end the year, and the Warriors never re-signed him. He bounced around the league, getting signed on one-year contracts, which then became 10-day contracts, before eventually just becoming the free agent he is today, and no team willing to sign him. Based on the conversation with Bob Myers, while the Kings stuck with him the longest because of how good he was, eventually his injuries have made his regrettable locker room presence not worth the hassle. As a superstar in this league, Boogie could get away with quite a bit because he could get out there, put people in the stands, and give them a show. For the injuries he has and where he's coming off the bench, Cousins would need a bit of humility to find himself on another NBA roster. Unfortunately, with his record, I don't see another team trusting him to not kill the team aspirations from inside out. This is why DeMarcus Cousins will not be returning to the Warriors. This is why DeMarcus is considered a locker room cancer. This is why DeMarcus Cousins will not be returning to the league. This is why DeMarcus Cousins' NBA career is over. Let me know if you think, despite everything I've said tonight, that the Warriors should go ahead and sign DeMarcus Cousins, or should any other team sign DeMarcus Cousins. Don't forget to leave your comments below. Thanks for watching. Till next time, swish.